Now, when it comes to quick target acquisition and transitioning between targets, it's hard to beat a red dot or a reflex sight. There is a limit though, however, for the accuracy at distance with a red dot. You know, when you're reaching up there at four and 500 yards with a red dot, it, it's, hard to even, it's hard to even see the IDPA up there at 500. Now, I have proven time and time again that we can hit the steel up there, the full-size IDPA targets, yep, up there at four and 500 yards easily with a red dot. But, you know, what about a little more precise shooting, like one of my 12-inch gongs at four or 500, or even a little bit smaller? So prism optics are another one of my favorites. You know, they're somewhere in between a scope and a red dot. Let's take a quick look here at Swamp Fox's Sabre prism optic, and we've got the Sentinel red dot mounted on the side. I'm Drew Case. Welcome to Beyond Seclusion, where I only give you my honest opinion, and it is what it is. Now, Prism Optic is a fixed-powered optic with the reticle etched on the glass, allowing for easy illumination. The most well-known of the Prism Optics is the ACOG. So that gives some people kind of an idea of what a pris prism or prismatic optic is. Now, the way they are constructed in use of lenses is different from a traditional scope, making them smaller, lighter, and often more durable um, with a typical fixed magnification of three, four, or five power. Now, most of them have an adjustable diopter to make adjustments for such things as near and far-sighted. Um, it, it's really nice having these. And you will find these on a lot of scopes Thing is, is with red dots and reflex sights, we don't have that option. Now, they also typically offer much better eye relief than rifle scopes, but not as good, obviously, as a reflex sight. Now, let's take a look at Swamp Fox's Saber up close here, see how it performs, and is it right for you? Take a quick look at the specs and tech before we get to shooting. Okay, so we got the Swamp Fox Saber here. We're gonna do the quick out of the box. Instructions, lens cleaning cloth, all the standard stuff. This is heavy, guys. Um, I'll have to look at the, the weight. This is not light. And then we have the side mounts and we're gonna mount the Sentinel on here. Controls up here, windage elevation, focus. Pretty simple. Battery compartment right there. Tools, plate, riser, and more tools. The Sentinel, which goes on the side of that. Okay, I've got some stickers, all the classic stuff. Okay, uh, bottom plate, I'm guessing this is a bottom mount battery. Battery goes underneath. Okay, Sentinel, this is a micro. Okay, really small, which is good. We're gonna fit it there on the side, battery goes underneath. You got plus and minus buttons, windage elevation, all the tools, battery, everything we need. Now, like most things we get, looks great on paper, out of the box, but how does it actually perform? Only one way to find out, let's get her done. Okay, so this is just kind of one of those rare moments so i'm sighting in my saber i've got the the sentinel on it here i'll show you the sight picture um you know i i did a laser bore sight last night right before going to bed at 100 yards i've also got some of my new aac 
the match, the 75 grain uh, with the Sierra Match King. And anyway, I fired a couple of shots and I got it on one, two, I think I fired two or three shots and then I put it right smack in the bullseye. So I'm thinking, okay. So I load four more to do a five shot group. You gotta check this out. There's five shot guys <laughs> with with a three power and uh, yeah so I had I had one shot over here I way over adjusted um, that's from a different one so actually it was one two and the third shot was in the red and then the four consecutive shots take a look at the sight picture here and you know that's impressive the the crosshairs are pretty small they're pretty fine i haven't decided if i like those but you know i guess proof's in the pudding okay so that was our initial sight in okay using my aac ammo and then i just did another five shot group <laughs> pan out here a little bit okay so i had a flinch and then there's four other shots Three are touching. Okay, so it's been a while since I got this mounted and got the initial groups. I had some other reviews I needed to get caught up on, but we've got an absolutely gorgeous day with no wind. So I want to show, I want to, I want to see if we can reproduce that awesome group. I also want to see how it does with kind of some more range ammo, a full metal jacket, and then... I just took a peek. That was some seriously. That was that was really an impressive group um, with you know full metal jacket range ammo. I'll show you, but they they were almost all touching. It was awesome. Um, I'm using my Athlon um, Midas. I'm going to do a review on these guys. This is their entry level binoculars, and I'm telling you the clarity on this glass. Um, exceeds a lot of binoc glass and optic glass that I've seen that runs anywhere from $500 to $1,000. These things rock. But anyway, I take a look at those groups, and I'm super happy with that. Um, now I'm going to use the 77 grain with the Sierra Match King. Let's, let's check so that out. There we go. That is our full metal jacket. One, two, three, four. That, that, that was a five-shot group. You know, guys, that, that's pretty good. I'm really happy with that. And then I jumped up here, um, and there's three touching with the Sierra Match King. And then, you know, I guess I would call that one a flyer. But again, you know, those crosshairs are really fine. So that's exceptional. I mean, a lot of people would be super happy with that, even with a high-power scope, let alone you know basically a five power prismatic optic and then there there was uh there's two in there that's another five shot group yeah that's awesome we're gonna jump to some steel now one thing i have experienced and it's not new with this optic um a lot of them that have illuminated reticles they just don't during the middle of the day I have to be honest, I can't even tell that this is illuminated. Um, I thought maybe the battery was dead, so I took it inside where I had shade and stuff. And, and then I have a nice red. Now, for some, that may not be an issue whatsoever. You know, thinking outside during the middle of the day, I don't need the illumination. The thing is, um, with this one, is those center crosshairs are pretty fine. Okay, the illumination really helps bring them out. Um, and I guess, you know, one thing right off the bat I would suggest is need to be able to crank up that illumination. Now, I know they talk about those crosshairs being really fine for precise shots, and that's, that's absolutely correct. You know, the finer the dot or the crosshairs in the center, the better your accuracy you're going to be able to get. It's, it's a fine balance, though, between you know, small and fine for accuracy, but then also being able to see it quickly. Now, if the outer circle was really well illuminated, 
that might actually help with that because then you could quickly see that big red circle and at a distance like 100 or something where you really don't necessarily need that super fine accuracy, um, you're going to have that, that circle to just simply put whatever you're, you're targeting in the middle of the circle, if that makes sense. Now, when we reach out at four and 500, you absolutely um, want those fine crosshairs and, and we want to be able to see the MOA. Now, this is not a BDC, remember, okay? This is a, a grid or a, a line, a measurement of the MOA. So we need to have something like my SIG Kilo, okay? And then I have the app on my phone so I can do the calculations. And I know like at 300 yards, I should be right on target at about 3.3 MOA and then using that line like right here and then I'm, we're just going to do the same out to 400 and 500. Okay, just show you here real quick what I'm seeing at 300. Uh, okay, now I need to go 4.39 MOA to be on target. So the first number that we can see is six, but when we look at that reticle, they're in divisions of two so it should be that first horizontal line there below the crosshairs and we should be spot on so let's give that a go and see if that works Now that was shooting, that was shooting at the, the IDPA, and well, if you ask me, in my opinion, shooting the IDPA, I should pretty much be able to about throw a rock at it here at 300 yards with a rifle. So I've got a 12-inch gong up there. Let's let's see if we can have the same luck with it. And then I'm also might I got this. I'm pretty sure zeroed pretty well at 100. Let's just cant it a little bit here and see if we can bang on the IDPA at 300 with the Sentinel. Okay, guys, I'm going to be honest. Shooting that 12-inch gong up there, sitting in front of hay bales and stuff, it's really hard to see the the four horizontal line. I, I'm struggling with that. Um, let's try the, the Sentinel here. Okay, now not, this is not necessarily the angle that I'm going to shoot it, but it's hard to hold the gun sideways. There you go. Now, I said I was going to start at three, but I'm actually going to start at two just to make sure that, you know, we're banging the steel here at two before we get uh, overzealous and jump up there to three. I have a feeling we're going to be pretty successful. I, I like the Sentinel. I like the red dot. <laughs> that's fun all right well we're banging the steel at two let's try it at three okay right. it's gonna be pushing it up there at three with the red dot i don't know if you can see it sometimes it gets goofy with the camera but i, I can see it quite clearly let's uh let's give it a go Reach up there at 500.
Hey folks, are you enjoying this review? If you are, help support the channel. Hit that subscribe button. This helps more than just about anything. It's simple, quick, costs you nothing, not a zip, zero, nothing. So hit that button. Keep the reviews coming. Now, if you have not visited my webpage, you should for many reasons, like my discount codes for some of the great companies, including ammo, guns, and gear. I have a list of the companies that I use the most and recommend. At the bottom of the page is a list of current discount codes ranging anywhere from 5 to 15% off anything in your cart. Now, you should be interested in my crazy, stupid deal subscription. Here are some of the deals that I found in the past. And when I find these, I now have the ability to share in an instant with everyone that subscribes. And I blast them out in an email as soon as I find them it costs you nothing unsubscribe at any time i have saved folks hundreds even thousands of dollars don't take my word read the comments it works it's awesome and it costs nothing if you follow my channel and you shop on Amazon, you can help support and keep the reviews coming by going on to Amazon through my link. Anything and everything you purchase by doing so helps support the channel. You can literally buy toilet paper through my link and it helps support the channel and the reviews. Simply save the link to your phone or your computer and shop as you always do. It Check out my highly rated online courses. They come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got nothing to lose. Literally thousands have found them helpful. Read the reviews and see for yourself. Here and check out the cooking tips page. There are some awesome recipes on there. Good food and it can literally save you thousands of dollars a year. Thanks for your help. Couldn't do it without you. Nice. Okay, real quick here, we'll just use the Sentinel on the side and engage the targets here at 50 yards. Might have to uh, run back to the CQB range, see how easy we can transition with this setup. Okay, let's try the Sentinel here at 100. So I want to try standing real quick using the Sabre here at 200 yards. It worked pretty good. Nice. Now I want to go back to the CQB range and see how we can transition with that. Okay, so the ATC might not be my first choice for this just because it is a big, heavy gun. It's a tack driver. Um, me personally, anyway, I definitely see putting this on something like my St. Edge, um, you know, something light and mobile. The reason I put it on the ATC was because I wanted to showcase the ability um, to maximize the accuracy. Anyway, um, it does give us a unique opportunity to see how well we can transition, you know, with the 90 degree right side mounted uh, Sentinel. So let's give that a go here. say that that worked pretty well i mean considering what we have here uh which is not a maneuverable gun we maneuvered pretty good there so there you, there you go guys back here at the cqb range okay there's only one thing left we gotta take this off we gotta torture it
I get down a little bit deeper here, give it a good test. This is the part of the torture test I always hate, because honestly, it really sucks when optics fail, because, well, it just does. Hey, we are looking good. I like it when they pass. Okay, it is what it is, but I do like it when they pass because then I get to put them back on and shoot them more, and I get to keep torture testing them. So we got to throw this in the freezer. Freezer test. Oh, yeah, I got some Omaha steaks there. Let's give it a good solid freezing. That should be. Oh, yeah, that's cold. Be good and frozen. Okay, well, out of the freezer and back on the gun, we'll find out. Hopefully, that's not condensation on the inside. The freezing does that often, but we'll let it kind of warm up and thaw out out here and go from there. All right, so I got it remounted and um, the Sentinel is working fantastic. I actually thought for sure that this is going to fail because it is a bottom mount battery and I've just I've had terrible luck with those not sealing um anyway yeah I, I was surprised um this however the saber did not pass uh the drop submerge and the freeze and after the hot tub it had passed. It looked good, but this is what I was talking about with the freeze. This does in a lot of optics. Um, we do not have uh, a clear picture there. Well, there you go, guys. It is what it is. Um, the Sentinel passed, but the Saber did not make it through the torture test. I'll reach out to uh, Swamp Fox, and we'll go from there. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it helpful. Uh, if so, make sure and hit that subscribe button right down here in the right-hand corner. That really does help the most. Um, until next time, happy shooting. Remember to educate our young people to shooting and gun safety. And every time we're on the range getting some trigger time, uh, some steel banging time, you, me, we're ambassadors for the Second Amendment. So be a safe and responsible gun owner.